The key turned in the lock with an unsettling creak, the old brass handle giving way with a heavy click. Mia pushed the door open and stepped into the foyer of her new home. The air was cold, unnaturally cold for late summer, and there was a dampness that clung to her skin like a cold sweat. The house was eerily quiet, too quiet. Her footsteps echoed off the walls as if the house itself was listening. She had gotten the house for a steal, far too good to be true for the price. But when the landlord, Mr. Granger, showed her around the week before, everything seemed normal, charming even. Sure, it was old, but that added to its character. She needed a place to start fresh after everything that had happened in the city. The isolation of the small town was supposed to be a relief, a place to find some peace. But now, standing in the middle of the house, the atmosphere felt suffocating, oppressive even. The silence gnawed at her, but she shook off the discomfort. It was just her nerves, she told herself. The remnants of stress from the city hadn't fully left her yet. As she began to unpack her things, she noticed something odd. No matter where she went, there was always a soft sound in the background. It was almost imperceptible at first, like a faint rustling, but it grew more noticeable as the hours passed. It was subtle, like whispers in the walls. Mia paused in her living room, her head cocked to one side, listening. The sound stopped. She frowned, brushing off the unease. Old houses make noise, she murmured to herself. It's just the pipes. But as night fell, the noise didn't stop. It changed. Lying in her bed, Mia felt her heart pounding. The sound had transformed into a low groan coming from somewhere deep beneath the house. She tossed and turned, trying to convince herself it was just the wind, but there was no wind, and the groaning was getting louder. Her heart began to race, her breath quickening. The silence between the groans became unbearable. Each second felt like an eternity. Suddenly, she heard something unmistakable. Footsteps. Heavy, deliberate footsteps. Her pulse spiked as she shot up in bed, her mind racing. The steps were slow, as though someone or something was carefully navigating the house. They seemed to come from below, in the basement. Her first thought was to call the landlord. Mr. Granger had said he lived nearby. Maybe he could help her figure out what was going on. She fumbled for her phone, but before she could dial, the footsteps stopped. The silence that followed was even worse. She sat in bed, clutching her phone tightly, her eyes darting around the dark room. For several long minutes, nothing happened. No more footsteps, no more groaning, just silence. The tension began to ease, her pulse slowly returning to normal. Maybe it was just her imagination. Mia lowered herself back into bed, pulling the covers up tightly around her. She told herself to calm down. The house was old, old houses creaked, that was all. But just as she began to drift off to sleep, there was a sharp knock at the door. Her heart stopped. The knock was too loud to be a coincidence. It came again, three slow, deliberate raps on the wooden door. Mia sat up, her hands trembling. It was past midnight. Who would be knocking at this hour? She got out of bed, her legs shaky beneath her. She crept towards the front door, the floorboards groaning beneath her feet. Her hand hovered over the doorknob for a moment before she slowly turned it and opened the door. There was no one there. The porch was empty bathed in the pale light of the moon. The street beyond was quiet, not a soul in sight. Mia's heart pounded in her chest, but there was nothing, no sign of anyone or anything that could have knocked. She closed the door, locking it tightly. But as she turned back towards the hallway, she froze. At the end of the hallway, near the door to the basement, she saw something, a figure. It was barely visible in the dim light, a shadowy outline of a person standing there, unmoving. Mia's breath caught in her throat, her entire body paralyzed with fear. She blinked and the figure was gone. Her heart pounded in her chest, her pulse roaring in her ears. She backed away from the basement door, refusing to take her eyes off where the figure had been. There was no way she was imagining it. Someone had been standing there. The groaning sound started again, louder this time, echoing up from the depths of the house. Mia's entire body trembled with fear as she realized the sound wasn't coming from the house itself. It was coming from the basement. Mia stood frozen, her back pressed against the door, her breath shallow and ragged. The groaning noise seemed to vibrate through the floor, pulsing up her legs and into her chest. Her heartbeat thudded in sync with the sound, a terrible rhythm that made her want to run, but her legs wouldn't move. She forced herself to turn, her eyes fixed on the basement door at the far end of the hallway. 
The door was old, heavy, painted in peeling white. It was cracked open, just a sliver, and she could see the blackness beyond it. The groaning came from deep within that darkness, a low, guttural moan, as if the house itself was alive. Her phone was still clutched in her hand. Shakily, she dialed the landlord's number. Mr. Granger had been so kind, so helpful when she first looked at the house. Surely he could explain all of this. The phone rang once, twice, and then nothing. No answer. She tried again. No voicemail, no ringing, just dead air. Mia hung up, her fingers trembling, and dialed again. Still, nothing. She felt a rush of panic. It was too late to call the police, wasn't it? What would she even say? That her house was making noises? That she had seen... What exactly? A shadow? A figure that wasn't there? The groaning stopped abruptly, plunging the house into an oppressive silence. Mia listened, straining her ears for any sign of movement. But now there was nothing. She took a step forward, her eyes still locked on the basement door. Another step. The floorboards creaked loudly beneath her feet, as if the house was protesting her presence. She moved closer, drawn toward the door despite the overwhelming dread flooding her mind. Just as she reached the door, a sudden rush of air burst from beneath it, like a deep exhale from the bowels of the house. The door swung open wider with a soft creak, and the darkness seemed to yawn open, beckoning her to come closer. No, she whispered, shaking her head. She backed away slowly, fear prickling at her skin. And then, footsteps. Heavy, deliberate footsteps from the basement stairs. Each step sent a shockwave of terror through her body. Mia's breath hitched as she stared into the dark opening of the basement, the sound growing louder, closer. Her legs finally found strength as she bolted down the hallway, back to her bedroom. She slammed the door shut, deft locking it and pressing her back against the wood, her hands trembling uncontrollably. She listened. The footsteps had stopped, for now. Her heart raced. She couldn't stay here. The house, there was something wrong with it, the landlord. Why hadn't he answered? Something was terribly wrong. She grabbed her phone again, dialing the number one more time, hoping, praying for an answer. The line clicked. Mia, a voice said, quiet, distant. Her blood ran cold. It was Mr. Granger's voice, but it sounded strange, distorted, like it was coming from far away, like he was speaking through layers of static. Mr. Granger? Mia whispered, her voice trembling. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Then, don't go into the basement. Mia's heart lurched. What? What's happening? Why didn't you? But the line went dead before she could finish. She pulled the phone away from her ear and stared at the screen. The call had ended. Panic surged through her. She stood pacing the room, trying to think. She couldn't stay here. She needed to leave. Now. She rushed toward the front door, grabbing her keys from the table. As she reached for the handle, her fingers brushed against something cold. The door wouldn't budge. The handle wouldn't turn. She jiggled it harder, pulling at the lock, but it was as though the door had fused shut. She pulled harder, but it was no use. She was trapped. Her chest tightened, her pulse quickening. Her heartbeat pounded in her ears, louder, faster. And then the groaning returned, louder this time, deeper, more menacing. It reverberated through the house, shaking the walls, and the floor seemed to shift beneath her feet. The basement door at the end of the hallway creaked open even wider, as though something was pushing it from the other side. No, she whispered, stepping back. Please, no. Suddenly, the lights flickered, casting long shadows that danced on the walls. The groaning grew louder, a deep rumbling like the growl of something waking from a long slumber. The floor beneath her feet trembled, and the air seemed to thicken with a suffocating heaviness. Then, something slammed against the basement door. Hard. Mia screamed, stumbling backward, her hands flying to her mouth. The door shook violently as if something was trying to force its way out. The groaning became an ear-splitting roar, and the temperature in the house plummeted, her breath turning to fog. She scrambled back toward the stairs, her mind spinning. She needed to get out. She needed to. The pounding on the basement door stopped abruptly. And then, a voice. Mia. She froze, her body going cold. The voice came from the basement, distant, yet familiar. She recognized it immediately. It was Mr. Granger. Mia, come down here. The voice called, but it was wrong, twisted somehow, like an echo of something that wasn't quite human. No, she whispered, backing away. Her hand brushed against the banister, but her legs wouldn't carry her any further. Mia, the voice said again, almost pleading, you have to see. 
The basement door swung open all the way, revealing nothing but darkness. Deep, endless darkness. Mia, come down. I've been waiting. The last thing she saw before the lights flickered out completely was a shadow, tall and thin, rising from the basement steps. The lights went out, plunging the house into suffocating darkness. Mia stood frozen on the stairs, her hand gripping the banister so hard her knuckles turned white. Her breath came in shallow, ragged gasps, her heart hammering in her chest. The groaning noise from the basement seemed to throb through the walls, a deep, guttural rumble that made her bones vibrate. Mia, the voice echoed again, softer now, more insistent. Come see. Her legs shook beneath her, barely able to support her weight. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to escape the house, but she was trapped. The front door wouldn't open, and the basement. The basement was alive with something she couldn't understand, something terrible. But the worst part was that voice. Mr. Granger's voice, familiar but distorted, as though he was speaking through layers of decay. Mia squeezed her eyes shut, willing herself to wake up from the nightmare. But when she opened them again, the basement door was still wide open. The shadows flickered and stretched, spilling out into the hallway like dark tendrils. She tried to back away, but her legs refused to move. Her body was paralyzed by fear, her breath catching in her throat. Then, a slow creak echoed through the house, and she saw something moving at the bottom of the basement stairs. A shape, tall and hunched, shrouded in darkness. It began to ascend the stairs, one slow, deliberate step at a time. Mia's heart raced so fast, it felt like it might burst from her chest. The shape grew larger, more defined with each step, though the shadows clung to it like smoke. A cold, clammy sweat broke out on her skin. She wanted to scream, to do anything to make the figure stop, but her voice had deserted her. As the figure reached the top of the stairs, it paused. In the faint light that flickered from the street outside, Mia could make out the contours of its face, elongated, gaunt, with hollow, sunken eyes that seemed to pierce through her, its mouth twisted into a grotesque smile, lips curling back to reveal darkened teeth. It was Mr. Granger, or at least it was something that had once been Mr. Granger. Mia, the thing said, its voice barely more than a whisper. I never left. Her blood ran cold as the realization hit her like a punch to the gut. The landlord. He wasn't alive. He had never ever been alive. Not since she moved in. He was part of the house. Mia stumbled backward, tripping over her own feet and landing hard on the floor. Pain shot up her back, but she barely noticed, too overwhelmed by the horror in front of her. The figure stepped forward, closer, the shadows swirling around it like smoke. You were supposed to stay, it whispered, its voice low and guttural, echoing off the walls. You were supposed to be here with me. No, Mia screamed, scrambling to her feet, her limbs finally obeying her. She dashed toward the back of the house, not knowing where she was going, only that she had to get away. The walls seemed to close in around her, the groaning sound growing louder with every step. The air felt thick, as if the house itself was pressing in on her, trapping her inside. She reached the kitchen, her eyes scanning wildly for a way out. The back door. She rushed toward it, her hands fumbling with the lock. But the handle wouldn't budge. It was stuck, just like the front door. Mia. The voice was closer now, too close. She turned to see the figure standing at the entrance to the kitchen, its dark eyes boring into her. It was smiling, that same twisted, unnatural smile. Why are you running? It asked, stepping toward her. You belong here. Mia's chest tightened, her heartbeat erratic. She grabbed a kitchen knife from the counter, her hand shaking violently. Stay away! She shouted, pointing the blade toward the figure. It stopped, cocking its head to one side as if amused. You can't hurt me. I'm part of this place. The floorboards creaked beneath her feet and suddenly the ground shifted. Mia lost her balance, the floor tilting beneath her like a ship on rough waters. She stumbled, grabbing onto the counter to keep from falling, but the house, it was moving. A deep rumble shook the foundation and the walls around her seemed to bend, groaning under some immense unseen pressure. The shadows twisted and writhed, stretching toward her like living things. Panic clawed at her throat as she looked around for another way out. Her eyes landed on the small window above the sink. It was tiny, but it might be big enough to squeeze through. Without thinking, she lunged for it, pulling herself up onto the counter. Her fingers scrabbled at the latch, and to her relief, it moved. She pushed the window open, feeling the cool night air rush in. Freedom. 
but just as she started to pull herself through the window, something cold and clammy grabbed her ankle. No, she screamed, kicking wildly. She looked down to see Mr. Granger's twisted face staring up at her, his long fingers wrapped around her leg. His grip was like ice, freezing her to the bone. You can't leave, Mia, he whispered, his voice thick with menace. This house is yours now. You belong to it, just like I do. With a surge of adrenaline, Mia kicked harder, her foot connecting with his face. His grip loosened just enough for her to wriggle free, and she pulled herself through the window, landing hard on the ground outside. She didn't stop to look back. She ran. The night air was cold and biting against her skin, but she didn't care. All that mattered was getting away from the house, from whatever had been inside it. Her lungs burned as she sprinted down the empty street, her mind reeling. But as she ran, a terrible thought crept into her mind. If Mr. Granger had never left the house, who had she met when she first toured it? Mia ran until her legs felt like they would give out, the cold night air burning her throat and lungs. She didn't stop until the house was far behind her, just a distant, looming shadow under the pale moonlight. Her thoughts raced faster than her heartbeat, spiraling through questions she couldn't answer. If Mr. Granger had been dead all along, who had she spoken to? Who had handed her the keys? The memory of the tour, so vivid in her mind, felt wrong now like a fever dream that had unraveled into something much darker. She reached the edge of town, her pace slowing as exhaustion weighed her down. Her hands trembled, not just from the cold, but from the terror that clung to her skin. She needed help, someone who could explain what was happening, but it was late, well past midnight, and the streets were eerily deserted. The town had seemed quaint during the day, but now it felt like a ghost town, Every window was dark, every street empty, as though the entire place had been abandoned. Mia's breath formed thick clouds in the air, the silence pressing in around her like a blanket of dread. Her eyes darted around, looking for any sign of life. Just ahead, she saw a dim light flickering in a small convenience store. The glow was weak, but it was the first sign of anything in what felt like hours. Without a second thought, Mia hurried toward it. The bell above the door jingled softly as she stepped inside. The store was empty, aside from an old man sitting behind the counter, reading a newspaper. He looked up when Mia entered, his brow furrowing as he took in her disheveled appearance. You all right, miss? He asked, his voice gravely and concerned. Mia was still trying to catch her breath, her words tangled in her throat. I need help, she finally managed, her voice shaking. The house, my house, something's wrong. The old man set his newspaper down and stood up slowly, his eyes narrowing. You're the new tenant, aren't you? Moved into the Granger place? Mia nodded, her heart pounding harder. Yes, but there's something, something in the house. I saw him, Mr. Granger. He's dead, but I saw him. He tried to. She stopped herself, realizing how insane she sounded. The house isn't right. The old man's face darkened, and he glanced toward the door as if expecting someone or something to walk in at, at any moment. He stepped out from behind the counter and motioned for her to sit down on a nearby stool. You'd better catch your breath, miss, he said quietly. There's a lot you don't know about that house, about Granger. Mia's pulse quickened, the tension in her body mounting. What do you mean? What's going on? Who did I meet when I rented the house? The old man's eyes flickered with a mix of sympathy and something darker, something grim. He hesitated for a moment before speaking, as if deciding how much to tell her. Granger's been dead for years, he said slowly, his voice heavy with meaning. Died in that house? Nobody's been willing to live there since. People around here know better. Mia's stomach dropped. But, but I saw him. He showed me the house, gave me the keys. How is that possible? The old man sighed deeply, had his gaze distant. What you saw wasn't Granger. Not really. He's a part of the house now, a part of whatever evil's been festering there for decades. That house, it has a way of keeping people, trapping them. Mia's hands shook as she gripped the edge of the stool. Why didn't anyone warn me? Why didn't you tell me before I moved in? We tried, the old man said, his expression pained. But you wouldn't have listened. Outsiders never do. They see the cheap price and the pretty old house, and they don't want to hear about the things that have happened there. By the time they realize what's really going on, it's too late. Mia's mind whirled with a thousand questions. Too late for what? What happens to the people who live there? The old man looked away, his jaw tightening. They don't leave, not really. Some vanish, others, well, 
They end up like Granger. Mia's blood ran cold. Like Granger? What do you mean? He didn't answer immediately. Instead, he stepped back toward the counter, reaching under it to pull out a thick, dusty ledger. He flipped it open and pushed it across the counter toward Mia. She looked down at the names written inside. Some of them crossed out, others marked with dates. What is this? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Everyone who's ever lived in that house, the old man said, his voice low. Most of them didn't last long. They either disappeared, went mad, or stayed. Mia stared at the list, her eyes catching the most recent name, Mia Kingsley. Her name. There was a blank space next to it as though it was waiting to be filled in. No, she whispered, shaking her head. I'm not staying. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here tonight. The old man's eyes softened with pity. I'm afraid it's not that simple. The house, it won't let you go, not without a fight. Mia's breath hitched. What do you mean, it won't let me go? He hesitated again, choosing his words carefully. The house is alive in a way. It feeds on the people who live there, on their fear, their pain. And once you've stepped inside, it has a hold on you. It'll do everything it can to keep you there. Mia's mind reeled, her body trembling with fear and disbelief. There has to be a way out, she said desperately. There has to be something I can do. There's only one way, the old man said gravely. But it's dangerous, and you might not survive. Mia's heart pounded. Tell me, please. The old man leaned in closer, his voice barely a whisper. You have to go back, face whatever's in that house, and end it. Her stomach lurched at the thought of returning to the house, to the basement, to whatever dark force lived there. But what choice did she have? How do I end it? She asked, her voice trembling. The old man shook his head. I don't know, but there's something in that basement, something tied to all of this. You have to find it, destroy it, if you can. Mia's pulse raced, fear twisting her insides. Go back, face whatever was lurking in the basement. It felt like walking into a death trap, but she couldn't live like this, trapped, haunted, forever running. She had to finish what had started. I'll do it, she said, her voice firm despite the terror bubbling inside her. The old man nodded slowly. Be careful. Once the house knows you're trying to leave, it'll do everything in its power to stop you. Mia stood, her body trembling with a mixture of fear and resolve. She turned toward the door, the cold night air outside feeling far less threatening than the house waiting for her. But she had to go back. Mia's body trembled as she left the store, her mind swirling with dread. The old man's words echoed in her ears, making her chest feel impossibly tight. Go back. Face whatever was in the house. End it. How was she supposed to destroy something she couldn't even comprehend? She had no idea what lurked beneath the house in the basement where Mr. Granger had been trapped, if that was even him. Her mind couldn't quite accept the reality of it, yet her body remembered the icy grip on her ankle, the twisted smile on his face. The cold night air prickled against her skin, but it did nothing to calm the storm inside her. As she walked back toward the house, each step felt heavier than the last. She knew she was walking into something far beyond her understanding, but there was no turning back now. The house had claimed her, and there was no escaping its grip. When the house finally came into view, looming at the end of the empty street like a dark sentinel, Mia stopped. Her breath came in ragged gasps, the sight of it sending waves of dread through her. The windows were dark, but there was something, watching. She could feel its eyes, unseen but palpable, scanning her every move. It felt as though the house was waiting for her, eager for her return. The front door, which had been so stubbornly stuck before, was now slightly ajar, as though it was inviting her back in. Um, the mere sight of it sent a shiver crawling up her spine. Every fiber of her being screamed to turn and run in the opposite direction, but she forced her legs to move forward. There was no other way. With a deep breath, she stepped up to the front door, her fingers trembling as she pushed it open. The hinges creaked loudly, echoing through the silent house. Darkness swallowed her whole as soon as she stepped inside, the oppressive atmosphere pressing down on her like a weight she couldn't shake off. The groaning noise had returned, faint at first but growing louder with every passing second. It reverberated through the walls, vibrating the floor beneath her feet. Mia's heart raced, her body going cold as the sound seemed to rise up from the depths of the house, the basement. The basement door stood open at the end of the hallway, beckoning her. The same dark, yawning chasm she had seen earlier, 
but now it seemed even more menacing. The shadows twisted and writhed in the dim light, as though something alive was stirring within the house itself. She knew she had to go down there. Mia steeled herself, gripping the knife she had taken from the kitchen. It felt like a fragile shield against whatever horror awaited her, but it was better than nothing. She walked slowly toward the basement door, each step making her heart pound harder in her chest. The moment she crossed the threshold and peered down the basement stairs, the air grew thick, heavy with the scent of damp earth and decay. The groaning sound grew louder, a low rumble that seemed to come from deep within the walls. Mia's breath hitched as she descended, the darkness swallowing her whole as she took each slow, deliberate step downward. When she reached the bottom, the basement was colder than she remembered. Freezing, in fact. Her breath came out in white puffs, the temperature plunging as though she had stepped into a tomb. The only light came from the faint glow of the moon outside, filtering in through a tiny, dirty window near the ceiling. Her eyes adjusted to the dim light and she scanned the room. It was empty. Barren. Just an old, musty basement with crumbling brick walls and exposed beams. The groaning sound had stopped, leaving behind a thick, oppressive silence that filled the space like a heavy fog. But something was wrong. She could feel it. Something in the air. A presence, thick and suffocating, surrounding her on all sides. The hair on the back of her neck stood on end as she took a step forward, her footfall echoing in the silence. And then she heard it. A faint whisper almost too soft to hear coming from the far corner of the basement. Mia's body tensed as she turned slowly, her heart slamming in her chest. The corner was shrouded in darkness, too thick for her to see into, but she could feel something there. Watching, waiting. Mia. The whisper was faint, barely audible, but it sent a chill down her spine. She took a cautious step toward the corner, her fingers tightening around the handle of the knife. The darkness seemed to thicken as she approached, the air growing colder and colder with every step. The whispering grew louder, more insistent, as though it was trying to pull her closer. Then she saw it, something glinting in the darkness, something metallic. She knelt down, her hand trembling as she reached out and brushed the dirt away from the object. It was a locket, old, tarnished, and covered in dust, but unmistakably a locket. Mia's heart raced as she picked it up, her fingers brushing against the cold metal. She wiped it clean with the sleeve of her jacket, revealing the intricate design etched into the front. A chill ran down her spine as she opened it. Inside was a photograph, a black and white image of a woman smiling softly. Her face was familiar, hauntingly so. Mia's breath caught in her throat as she realized why. It was the same woman she had seen in the picture hanging in the hallway upstairs, the woman who had lived in the house before her, the one who had disappeared. The air around her seemed to shift, growing heavier, darker. The whispering intensified, surrounding her from all sides. Mia's heart pounded as she stood, clutching the locket in her hand. Something was happening. Something was waking up. Suddenly, the floor beneath her feet shifted, the ground rumbling with a deep, unnatural force. Mia stumbled, barely catching herself as the walls seemed to close in around her. The groaning noise returned, louder than ever, vibrating through the very foundation of the house. And then, from the corner of the basement, a figure emerged. Tall, gaunt, and shrouded in shadows, it stepped toward her, its movements slow and deliberate. Mia's breath hitched as she backed away, her eyes wide with terror. The figure was familiar, too familiar. It was the woman from the photograph, but her face was twisted, pale and lifeless, her eyes dark and hollow. You shouldn't have come back, the figure whispered, its voice low and echoing. Mia stumbled backward, her heart racing. What? What do you want? The figure stepped closer, its cold, empty eyes locked on Mia. The house, it's hungry. It needs you. It needed me. And now, it needs you. The words sent a wave of terror crashing over Mia, her mind reeling with fear. The figure's twisted smile widened as it reached out toward her, its bony fingers curling in the air. Mia's grip tightened around the knife, but her body was frozen in place, paralyzed by the overwhelming presence of the figure. The shadows seemed to close in around her, the air thick with the weight of the house itself. You can't escape, the figure whispered, its voice like a cold wind. You're already part of it. Mia's heart slammed in her chest as the figure stepped closer, its fingers brushing against her, her skin. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. The house had her. Mia's scream lodged in her throat as the figure's icy fingers brushed against her skin. The cold was unbearable, 
seeping into her bones like frostbite. She stumbled backward, tripping over the uneven floor, her knife falling from her hand and clattering uselessly to the ground. The figure moved slowly, deliberately, as though savoring her fear. Its hollow eyes bore into her, unblinking, its twisted smile widening with each step. Uh, the whispering in the air grew louder, a cacophony of voices surrounding her, echoing the same words over and over. You're part of it now. Mia's breath came in shallow gasps as she backed into the far wall, her body trembling uncontrollably. The cold air wrapped around her like a shroud, suffocating and thick. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to escape, but there was nowhere to go. The basement felt like a tomb, the walls pressing in, trapping her. You can't leave, the figure whispered, its voice low and guttural. You're already claimed. Tears stung Mia's eyes as the reality of her situation set in. She was trapped. The house had her, just like it had Mr. Granger, just like it had the woman standing in front of her. She would never leave this place, unless she could find a way to fight back. The locket. Her hand instinctively closed around the cold metal locket she had found moments before. She didn't know why, but something told her that it was important. Perhaps even the key to understanding what was happening. There had to be a reason it was hidden in the basement, buried beneath layers of dirt and decay. The woman, the ghost, took another step forward, her face contorting into something more grotesque, more monstrous. Mia's heart pounded in her chest, her mind racing as she tried to think of a way out. She couldn't let this thing touch her again, couldn't let the house claim her soul the way it had claimed so many others. Her eyes darted around the room, searching for anything she could use to defend herself. The knife was out of reach, lying several feet away on the cold stone floor. Her body was still frozen, locked in place by terror and the oppressive energy of the house. But then a thought struck her, something the old man had said back at the convenience store. The house, it feeds on fear, pain. Uh, Mia swallowed hard, the idea slowly taking shape in her mind. The house wanted her to be afraid, wanted her to break. But what if she refused? What if she didn't give it what it wanted? With trembling hands, Mia held the locket up in front of her like a shield, her fingers curling tightly around it. She had no idea what power the object held, if any, but she couldn't let herself give in to fear. Not now. Not when her very life, her soul, depended on it. I'm not afraid of you, Mia said, her voice wavering but determined. I won't let you have me. The figure stopped, its hollow eyes narrowing as though it had heard something it didn't like. The whispering around Mia grew louder, more frantic, but she held her ground, clutching the locket tighter. The ghost's expression twisted into a snarl, its once human features warping into something far more monstrous. Its mouth stretched unnaturally wide, sharp teeth glinting in the faint moonlight. Uh, it lunged at Mia, its clawed hands outstretched, moving faster than before. Mia braced herself, but just as the figure reached her, the locket in her hand pulsed glowing with a faint ethereal light. The ghost recoiled, hissing and snarling, its form flickering in and out of existence. The light from the locket grew stronger, bathing the room in a soft, warm glow. Mia's heart leaped in her chest. The locket, whatever it was, it was protecting her. Uh, the ghost couldn't touch her as long as she held on to it. The figure shrieked, retreating further into the shadows, its once human appearance now completely gone. It was a twisted, horrifying mass of dark energy, writhing and seething in the corner of the basement. You're too late, the ghost snarled, its voice distorted, barely recognizable. The house won't let you go. It never lets anyone go. Mia's resolve hardened. I don't care, I'm getting out of here. Uh, the light from the locket continued to pulse, growing brighter with every second. The shadows around her seemed to shrink away, retreating from the warmth of the light. Mia stepped forward, her body finally moving as the cold grip of fear loosened its hold on her. She reached for the knife, her fingers closing around the handle. With one last glance at the retreating figure, she turned and ran for the stairs. The house groaned in protest, the floor beneath her feet shaking violently, as though it was trying to trap her within its walls. But Mia didn't stop. She sprinted up the stairs, her heart pounding in her chest as the walls seemed to close in around her. The air grew thicker, the groaning noise intensifying, but she kept moving, driven by sheer will. The moment she reached the top of the stairs, the basement door slammed shut behind her, the force of it rattling the entire house. The walls shuddered, the floor beneath her feet shifting and creaking.
The house was fighting back, trying to keep her inside, but Mia wasn't going to let it win. She ran toward the front door, her hand still clutching the locket tightly. The groaning sound grew louder, more desperate, as the house seemed to quake with fury. But Mia didn't stop. She yanked the front door open. This time, it didn't resist. Cold night air rushed in, filling her lungs with a sense of freedom she hadn't felt since she first stepped foot inside the cursed house. Without looking back, Mia bolted out the door and into the street. The groaning noise faded as she ran, the oppressive weight of the house lifting from her shoulders. She didn't stop running until she was several blocks away, her legs burning and her breath ragged. Finally, she stopped, turning back to look at the house in the distance. It stood there, dark and silent, as though nothing had happened. But Mia knew the truth. The house was alive. It had, been, it had been feeding on the souls of its residents for decades, maybe even longer. Mia unclenched her hand, staring down at the locket. The faint glow had faded, leaving only the tarnished metal behind. She didn't know how, but the locket had saved her. She couldn't explain it. None of this made sense. But she was alive. She had escaped. Or so she thought. As she stood there, catching her breath, the locket in her hand suddenly grew cold. A chill ran down her spine as the whispering returned, faint, distant, but unmistakable. You can't escape, Mia. The house, it still wants you. Mia's heart dropped. She had escaped the house, but she hadn't ended it. It was still out there, waiting. Mia stumbled backward, her breath catching in her throat as the whispering grew louder. The locket in her hand pulsed once, then went cold again, like it had never glowed at all. Her eyes darted back to the house, now just a dark silhouette against the night sky. The street was empty, silent, but Mia could feel it, the presence of the house. Even from this distance, it was as though invisible tendrils were still wrapped around her, refusing to let her go. Her heart pounded. She had made it out, hadn't she? Yet something gnawed at her. The whispers, faint as they were, seemed to cling to the edges of her mind, filling her with a creeping sense of dread. It wasn't over. She stood there, frozen, trying to catch her breath. Her hand shook, the locket dangling loosely between her fingers. The feeling of relief she'd felt moments earlier had evaporated, replaced by the crushing realization that whatever force was tied to that house, it wasn't going to let her leave so easily. The house had claimed her, and it wasn't done yet. Mia took a step back, her instincts screaming at her to run. But where could she go? How could she escape something that wasn't just a building, but a living, breathing entity? something that seemed to exist beyond the physical realm. Every direction felt like a trap. Then her phone buzzed in her pocket. Mia flinched at the sudden sound, her fingers fumbling as she pulled the phone out. She didn't recognize the number, but without thinking, she answered. Hello, she whispered, her voice shaky. Mia, came the voice on the other end. It was, was deep, gravelly, and unfamiliar, sending a shiver down her spine. You need to come back, her throat tightened. Who is this? You don't have time for questions, the voice responded, urgent now. The house won't rest. It never does. You're still tied to it. You need to go back. Mia's grip on the phone tightened. Why would I ever go back there? A long pause. The silence was suffocating, stretching out between them, because you're the only one who can stop it. Mia blinked, her heart thudding in her chest. Stop it? How? What am I supposed to do? I barely made it out alive. I can help you the voice replied, calmer now, but still filled with an undercurrent of desperation. Meet me at the house, bring the locket. Mia's mind raced. It was insanity. She couldn't go back to that place, not after everything that had happened, but something in the voice stirred a tiny spark of hope. Whoever this person was, they seemed to know what was going on. Maybe they knew how to end this nightmare once and for all. The alternative, letting the house keep its hold over her, over others, was worse. I'll meet you, Mia said, her voice trembling. But if this is a trick, it's not, the voice interrupted. You'll understand when you get there. Don't delay. The line went dead before she could ask anything else. Mia stared at her phone, the anxiety swirling in her chest. She was about to walk right back into the belly of the beast. Was she insane? Did she really believe that whoever was on the other end of that call could help her? She didn't have a choice. The whispering was getting louder, and every step she took away from the house felt heavier, as if the house was pulling her back, dragging her into its clutches. With a deep breath, she turned around and began walking back toward the house. 
The night seemed darker, colder, with the oppressive energy she had felt earlier pressing down on her like a weight. She kept glancing at the locket, its cold surface feeling like an anchor in her palm. It was her only weapon, and she didn't even know why. As the house came back into view, she noticed something strange. A light was on in the window, a faint glow coming from the same room where she had first seen the landlord. Her pulse quickened, every nerve in her body telling her to run, but she pressed on. The front door was ajar, just as she had left it. Mia hesitated on the porch, her fingers brushing the edge of the doorframe. It felt wrong, stepping back inside. The air was thick, heavy with tension. The whispering was louder now, clearer. They were calling her by name. Mia. Mia. With a shaky breath, she stepped into the house. The door slammed shut behind her with a deafening bang. Mia jumped, her heart leaping into her throat. The locket in her hand pulsed once, then went cold again. The house groaned, its walls seeming to breathe as the floor creaked beneath her feet. Mia, she turned sharply at the sound of the voice. Standing at the bottom of the staircase was a man, tall, gaunt, his features sharp and ghostly in the dim light. He wore old-fashioned clothes, the kind you'd expect to see in a photograph from a century ago. Who are you? Mia demanded, her voice trembling. The man's eyes were hollow, dark, but there was something familiar about him, something she couldn't quite place. I am what remains of him, the man said softly. The landlord, the one who never left. Mia's stomach twisted. She stepped back, her grip on the locket tightening. You were Mr. Granger? Her voice barely rose above a whisper. He nodded slowly. I was, a long time ago. The house, it kept me, trapped me, just like it will do to you if you don't destroy it. Mia's mind reeled. She'd been living under the shadow of this man's friend's presence the whole time, and now he stood before her, a hollowed-out shell of the person he once was. How do I stop it, she asked, desperation creeping into her voice. What do I do? The man's eyes flickered to the locket in her hand. That locket, it holds the key. It's the only thing that can sever the house's grip on you. On us. Mia glanced down at the locket, its tarnished surface now seeming more significant than ever. You need to go to the source, the man continued. The basement. The house's heart is buried there. Destroy it and you destroy the house's hold on us all. Mia swallowed hard, her throat dry. The basement. The very place where she had first encountered the horrors of this house. And then what? she asked. What happens to you? A flicker of sadness crossed the man's face. I'll finally be free. The floor beneath them groaned, the walls creaking as the house seemed to stir, reacting to their conversation. Time was running out. Mia knew what she had to do, but every part of her screamed against going back down into that dark, suffocating space. The man took a step back, his figure fading slightly into the shadows. Hurry, he said, before it's too late. Mia nodded, her heart racing. Clutching the locket tightly in her hand, she turned toward the basement door. It was time to end this. Mia's hand trembled as she reached for the basement door. The weight of the house seemed to press down on her, thick and suffocating. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to flee from this cursed place, but the landlord's words echoed in her mind, destroy the house's heart and we'll all be free. The door creaked open, revealing the narrow staircase leading into the basement's black maw. A cold draft rushed up from the depths, carrying with it the stench of decay and something more insidious the same malevolent energy she had felt ever since moving in. Taking a deep breath, Mia stepped inside, gripping the locket tightly as she descended into the darkness. The house groaned in response, as if it sensed her defiance, as if it knew what she was planning. The basement was colder than before, the air thick with moisture and rot. Shadows seemed to dance along the walls, moving unnaturally in the dim light from the bare bulb overhead. The whispers were louder now, like a chorus of unseen voices calling out from the darkness. Mia. Mia. She ignored them, her focus entirely on finding the source of the house's power. The locket in her hand felt heavier with each step she took, as though it was guiding her toward something. Toward the heart of the house. The floor creaked beneath her feet, the sound eerily echoing in the confined space. She moved cautiously, her eyes scanning the room for any sign of where she needed to go. The basement was a labyrinth of old furniture, broken appliances, and dust-covered boxes. Yet amidst the clutter, something caught her eye. In the far corner of the room, partially hidden behind an old wooden crate, was a hatch. 
It was small and covered in dirt, as if it hadn't been disturbed in years. Mia's pulse quickened. This had to be it, the entrance to whatever was hidden beneath the house. Swallowing her fear, she moved the crate aside and knelt to open the hatch. The rusted metal hinges groaned in protest, revealing a set of stone steps leading even deeper underground. A foul stench wafted up from the passage below, making Mia gag. For a brief moment, she hesitated. Every fiber of her being wanted to turn around and leave, to abandon this madness and never look back. But she couldn't. Not now. The house had already taken so much from her, from all of them. It had to end here. Stealing herself, Mia descended the steps, the darkness swallowing her whole. The air grew colder as she descended, the walls damp with moisture, the stone beneath her feet was slick and she had to steady herself with every step. The whispers followed her, growing louder, more insistent, but they no longer frightened her. She was here to end this. At the bottom of the steps, the tunnel opened into a small chamber. The air was thick and oppressive, as though something ancient and malevolent had seeped into the very stones of the house. In the center of the room was an altar, crudely constructed from old, weathered stone. And sitting atop the altar, half buried in dirt and grime, was a small box. It was made of dark wood, its surface etched with symbols that Mia didn't recognize, but there was no mistaking the energy radiating from it. This was it, the heart of the house. Mia's hand trembled as she approached the altar. The air around her seemed to pulse, the whispering intensifying to an almost deafening level. Her breath came in shallow gasps as she stood before the box, the locket in her hand pulsing faintly in response. This was the source of the house's power. The entity that had trapped the landlord that had haunted her every waking moment was tied to this object. If she could destroy it, she could finally be free. But as her fingers brushed the surface of the box, something shifted in the darkness. The shadows in the room seemed to coalesce, forming into a shape. No. A presence. It was tall, impossibly tall, its body shrouded in darkness, its face obscured by a hood. But even without seeing its features, Mia could feel the malice radiating from it. The house itself had taken form. You cannot stop me, the figure hissed, its voice a low, guttural growl. You are already mine. Mia's heart raced, her mind screaming for her to run, but she couldn't. She was frozen in place, staring up at the creature that loomed before her. It stepped closer, its massive form blocking the exit, trapping her in the chamber. The others, they all failed, the figure continued, its voice dripping with contempt. What makes you think you're any different? Mia clenched the locket in her hand, the cold metal pressing into her palm. She didn't know if she was different. She didn't know if she could win, but she had to try. I'm not afraid of you, she whispered, though her voice shook. The figure let out a low, rumbling laugh. Fear is not what binds you to this place. It's something far more powerful, and you will never escape it. Mia stepped closer to the altar, her eyes locked on the box. We'll see about that. With a quick motion, she grabbed the box and yanked it off the altar. The figure hissed, its form flickering in the dim light, but it didn't stop her. Mia held the box in her hands, its weight heavy, almost unbearable. The locket in her other hand pulsed again, glowing faintly as if reacting to the presence of the box. I won't let you keep hurting people, Mia said, her voice growing stronger. I won't let you take me. The figure's form wavered, its shadowy mass shifting and flickering like smoke in the wind. You cannot destroy me, it snarled. You are part of this house now, just as they were. Mia ignored the figure's words. She could feel the power in the locket, the same energy that had protected her before. Whatever connection the locket had to the house, it was the key to breaking its hold. Without hesitation, she slammed the locket onto the surface of the box. A blinding light erupted from the locket, filling the chamber with an intense, searing glow. The figure shrieked, its shadowy form writhing and contorting as the light consumed it. The walls of the chamber shook violently, and the ground beneath Mia's feet trembled. The whispers, the voices that had plagued her since the moment she entered the house, suddenly stopped. The box in Mia's hands began to crack, the wood splintering as the energy inside it surged. With one final deafening crack, the box shattered, releasing a torrent of dark, swirling smoke. The smoke twisted and coiled in the air before dissipating, leaving nothing but silence in its wake. The figure was gone. The house was still. Mia collapsed to her knees, gasping for breath. 
The locket, now dull and lifeless, lay in her hand. She had done it. She had broken the house's hold. The oppressive energy that had filled the air was gone, replaced by an eerie calm. But as she sat there in the darkness, a single thought nagged at her mind. Was it truly over? Mia remained on her knees, staring at the shattered remains of the box. The locket lay still in her hand, cold and inert. For the first time since stepping into the house, the air felt lighter, as though the oppressive presence that had weighed on her for days had vanished. But deep down, a gnawing feeling of uncertainty lingered. Was it really over? The room was eerily silent. The whispers, the voices, the overwhelming sense of being watched. They were all gone. Even the walls, which had groaned and creaked with the house's life force, seemed frozen. But that nagging feeling in the pit of her stomach wouldn't leave. Mia pushed herself to her feet, her legs shaky from exhaustion. She was so close to freedom, to walking away from this nightmare, but something didn't sit right. She glanced around the dark chamber one last time before turning toward the stone stairs leading back to the basement. Her footsteps echoed in the narrow tunnel as she climbed, the cold stone sending shivers through her body. When she reached the top, she stopped at the threshold, taking in the sight of the basement. It looked exactly the same, cluttered, dark, and damp, but something about it felt different. The tension that had hung thick in the air was gone. Mia exhaled, relieved, and made her way toward the basement door. She reached out to turn the handle, but just as her fingers touched the cool metal, a faint sound caught her attention. It was soft at first, almost imperceptible, but it sent a chill racing down her spine. Thud. Mia froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She turned slowly, her eyes scanning the room. The sound came again, louder this time. A low, rhythmic thudding, like something heavy being dragged across the floor. Her pulse quickened, fear creeping back into her bones. Thud. The sound was coming from behind her, near the far wall. Mia's breath hitched as she moved cautiously toward the source, her every instinct screaming at her to run. The closer she got, the louder the noise became, reverberating through the floor beneath her feet. When she reached the far wall, she stopped, staring at the wooden panels in front of her. The thudding continued, slow and steady, as if something was trying to break free from the other side. Without thinking, Mia placed her hand against the wall. The wood was warm. It pulsed under her touch. Suddenly, the thudding stopped. Mia yanked her hand back, stumbling away from the wall. She couldn't move, couldn't breathe, her eyes locked on the spot where she had just touched. Silence filled the room again, but it wasn't the peaceful kind. It was the kind that crawled under your skin, suffocating you with its weight. Before she could process what was happening, the wall began to crack. Slowly, splinters of wood fell to the floor, the crack spreading like a jagged scar across the surface. Mia's throat went dry as the wood gave way, revealing a dark, gaping hole in the wall. And then she saw it. A figure, pale, skeletal, and utterly grotesque, crawled out from the hole. Its limbs were long and twisted, its face sunken and gaunt. It moved with unnatural jerks, its bones cracking and shifting with every step. The thing's eyes were hollow, black voids that seemed to suck in the light around it. Mia's stomach churned as the creature's head tilted in her direction. A twisted grin spread across its face, its teeth jagged and yellow. It moved closer, dragging its body across the floor in that sickening, rhythmic thud she had heard moments ago. Mia backed away, her body trembling with terror. She had destroyed the box. She had severed the house's power. So how was this thing still here? The creature stopped just a few feet from her, its face contorting into a grotesque imitation of a smile. You thought you could break free, it rasped, its voice a low, guttural growl. But the house, it lives, it feeds, and now it wants you. Mia's blood ran cold. The house wasn't gone. It had never been gone. She had only scratched the surface of its power, and now it was coming for her. The creature lunged. Mia stumbled back, her heart racing as she scrambled to her feet and ran for the basement door. Her hand fumbled with the handle, her fingers slick with sweat as she threw the door open and bolted up the stairs. The house groaned around her, the floorboards creaking with each step. But she didn't stop. She couldn't. The walls seemed to close in on her as she ran through the hallway, her breath coming in ragged gasps. The creature's rasping breaths echoed behind her, growing louder with every step. It was gaining on her. She reached the front door and yanked it open, the night air hitting her like a slap to the face. Without looking back, she sprinted outside, her feet pounding against the pavement as she fled the house. 
but the whispers, they had returned. They grew louder in her ears, swirling around her like a storm. Mia's vision blurred as she ran, the world around her warping and twisting as if reality itself was bending to the will of the house. You can't escape, the voices hissed. You're part of it now. Mia stumbled to a stop, her chest heaving as she doubled over, gasping for breath. She was halfway down the street, but the house loomed behind her, its shadow stretching out like an ominous hand. The whispers were deafening now, filling her mind with their insidious chant. No, she whispered, clutching her head. No, I destroyed it. I destroyed the box. The realization hit her like a sledgehammer. The box had been a decoy, a trap. The house had tricked her into thinking she could break free, but all she had done was play into its hands. The heart of the house wasn't in the box. It was deeper, older, tied to something far more powerful. She was never meant to escape. The ground beneath her feet began to tremble, cracks spreading across the pavement as the house's grip on her tightened. Mia stumbled, her vision blurring as the world around her seemed to shift. The whispers were no longer just in her head, they were everywhere, surrounding her, suffocating her. The house was pulling her back. Mia collapsed to her knees, her body shaking with terror. She couldn't fight it. The house had claimed her from the moment she stepped inside, and now it was finishing what it had started. And then, in the distance, she saw him. The landlord, Mr. Granger, stood at the edge of the street, his ghostly form flickering in the moonlight. His hollow eyes met hers, and for a brief moment, Mia thought she saw a glimmer of sadness. He had never left the house, and neither would she. As the world around her dissolved into darkness, Mia's last thought was that she had never been alone. The house had been waiting for her all along. It was never meant to let her go. Mia's vision faded into darkness, and for a moment she felt as if she were floating, weightless, suspended in an abyss that stretched infinitely in every direction. The whispers still swirled around her, echoing in her mind like a haunting chorus. But even in the suffocating blackness, she could feel it, the pull of the house dragging her back. And then, just as suddenly, she was standing. Her eyes blinked open, and she found herself inside the house again. The front door stood behind her, closed and locked, as if she had never left. The same suffocating energy clung to the air, thick and tangible, but now it felt even stronger. The house seemed alive with power, more oppressive than before. Mia's pulse raced, panic rising in her chest. She had escaped, she had run outside, but now, here she was, back at the very heart of the nightmare she had tried to flee from. The house had her. It had always had her. Taking a shaky step forward, Mia glanced around. The furniture was arranged just as it had been when she first moved in, dusty, old, and forgotten, but the atmosphere felt different. The very walls seemed to pulse with dark energy, as if they were watching her, anticipating her next move. You're part of it now. The creature's words echoed in her mind, taunting her, reminding her that escape was impossible. But she had no choice. She couldn't give up. Not yet. The hallway stretched ahead, dark and endless, like a tunnel leading deeper into the heart of the house. Mia took a deep breath and started walking, her legs trembling with every step. The whispers grew louder, swelling in volume as if the house were breathing, its heartbeat sinking with hers. She made her way through the hallway, her eyes darting to the shadows that seemed to shift and move in the corners of her vision. The further she walked, the more distorted the house became. Walls twisted and stretched unnaturally. Doors appeared where they shouldn't have, and the floor beneath her feet seemed to ripple like water. The house was no longer bound by the rules of reality. It was alive, and it was feeding off her fear. As she reached the staircase leading to the upper floor, Mia froze. Standing at the top of the stairs was Mr. Granger. His ghostly form was pale and flickering, just like before, but his expression was different. This time, there was no malice in his eyes. Instead, he looked sad. Mia, he whispered, his voice barely audible over the cacophony of whispers filling the house. She stared up at him, her mind racing. What do you want from me? She demanded, her voice shaky. Why won't you let me go? Mr. Granger's eyes softened, and for a moment he almost seemed human again. I never wanted this, he said, his voice filled with regret. I never meant for anyone to get trapped here. The house, it's older than you think. It's alive in ways we can't understand. Mia clenched her fists. Then why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you stop me from coming here? He looked down, shame flickering across his face. I tried, but I was bound to it, just like you are now. 
The house, it pulls people in. It feeds on their energy, their fear, until they become part of it. I've been trapped here for decades, but I was already dead when I moved in. My spirit was drawn to it. Mia's chest tightened. So you're telling me there's no way out? That I'm just stuck here forever? Mr. Granger hesitated, his form flickering as if he were struggling to maintain his presence. There is one way, but it's dangerous. The house has a core, a true heart buried deep within it. If you destroy it, you can sever its hold. Mia's heart raced. Where is it? I'll do it. I'll destroy it. He shook his head. I don't know where it is. The house is always changing, always shifting, but I can tell you this. It's connected to the ones it has trapped. You've already been drawn to it once, down in the basement. The box you destroyed wasn't the heart, but it was a piece of it. Mia felt a cold shiver run down her spine. She had come so close, only to be fooled by the house. So how do I find the real heart? She asked. Mr. Granger's form flickered again, his face fading in and out of view. You'll need to go deeper. Follow the house's whispers. It will lead you to the heart, but be careful. The house won't let you destroy it without a fight. Before Mia could respond, Mr. Granger vanished, his ghostly form dissolving into the shadows. The house groaned, the walls creaking, as if in response to his words. Mia knew what she had to do. She turned and made her way back toward the basement, her heart pounding in her chest. The air grew colder the closer she got, and the whispers grew louder, almost frantic, as if the house sensed her determination. When she reached the basement door, she hesitated for only a moment before throwing it open. The narrow staircase stretched down into the darkness, but this time it felt different. The basement no longer felt like a dead end. It felt like the gateway to something far more sinister. Mia descended the stairs, her hands gripping the railing tightly as she made her way into the depths. The air was thick with moisture and the stench of rot was overwhelming, but she pressed on, her resolve unshaken. As she reached the bottom of the stairs, the basement seemed to stretch and warp before her eyes. The walls twisted unnaturally, the shadows shifting and swirling like living creatures. But in the center of the room, something new had appeared. A door. It was ancient, made of dark, weathered wood, its surface etched with strange, glowing symbols. It pulsed with energy, and Mia knew instantly that this was it. This was the entrance to the house's heart. Her breath hitched as she approached the door. The whispers had reached a fever pitch now, filling her mind with their frantic, unintelligible murmurs. The house knew what she was about to do, and it was afraid. Mia reached out, her hand trembling as she touched the door. It was warm under her fingertips, as if something alive was breathing behind it. She took a deep breath and pushed it open. The room beyond was small and dimly lit, the walls made of rough stone. In the center of the room sat a pedestal, and atop it was an object that pulsed with dark energy. It was the heart of the house. The object was twisted and grotesque, a mass of blackened roots and sinew pulsating with a malevolent energy. The air around it crackled with power, and Mia could feel the weight of the house's presence bearing down on her. Her fingers brushed the surface of the heart, and instantly, a surge of energy coursed through her, freezing her in place. The house roared around her, the walls shaking violently, as if in protest. But Mia didn't stop. She clenched her fists, summoning every ounce of strength she had left, and slammed her hand down on the heart with all her might. Uh, the room exploded in light. The house screamed, a deafening wail that echoed through the walls, shaking the very foundation. The walls cracked and crumbled, the shadows dissolving into nothingness as the house's power was severed. Mia's vision blurred as the energy surged through her, but she didn't let go. She held on, feeling the heart shudder beneath her hand as it began to break apart. And then, with one final resounding crack, the heart shattered. The house fell silent. Mia collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath. The air was still. The oppressive weight that had clung to the house for so long finally lifted. It was over. She had won. As she lay there exhausted but free, a soft breeze drifted through the basement, carrying with it the faintest hint of sunlight. The house was no more.